Which what? one? You tell. Okay. Want to go to the playground. Oh. Push. Push, push, push. Yeah, we've never asked for this one. has been diagnosed with ID, was it, which is intellectual disability and autism. And she is low functioning, uh, she's nonverbal. I'm Jamie, I'm Leah's dad. Hi, I'm Landon and I am Leah's big brother. Hi, my name is Shaylee. I am Leah's respite provider and I was her behavioral therapist. How would you describe Leah? Leah has a very sweet nature. She loves little tickles and like to always just be holding on to me or cuddling. She loves to have always her iPad as a comfort or a blanket. Uh, she loves her little figurines. Very energetic. She's happy for the most part. She doesn't throw a lot of fits. Um, a lot of autistic children do. She will every once in a while, but she's very happy-go-lucky, very energetic. I would describe Leah as a great sister. We play a lot, but when we play, we play. She tackles me hard. <laughs> Leah is incredibly spunky. She's very sassy, but incredibly sweet. She has a heart of gold, and all she wants is just to be able to give you love and receive love. She is a person of love. How would you describe your relationship with your daughter? Me personally, she's my, my best friend. She's my little mini me. She's, she's actually more of a mama's girl. Uh, she comes to me for comfort and just to snuggle and cuddle and, and play. I'm her primary person, I think. Not your normal relationship. <laughs> um, I obviously love her very much as my daughter, but it's a different kind of relationship than I have with my son, for example. I, she doesn't connect with me, and I don't connect with her the way my son and I do, a, a quote-unquote normal child, if you will. I have to do it with her differently. It's not like a normal sister. She's, she's like a sister who can't talk and doesn't do as much as other sisters. We don't fight, and my mom loves that. <laughs> and, and we mostly play a lot, and she doesn't like... Like, just get them mad. She doesn't, well, sometimes she does, but she doesn't do that as much. What does Leah's daily routine look like? Her daily routine, she has therapy at 11. And so in the morning she wakes up, she wants her iPad. She wants to be zipped in her bed for at least a half hour to wake up. She likes, she, that's her comfort is in her bed. Um, then, so at 11, we take her to therapy. She's there for three hours. And then we come home, it's I'll let her either play outside or she'll get in the bath because she loves to take baths. And so we'll do that. And then afterwards, she just kind of, you know, goes in and out of her bed or she'll come and play with her brother or, uh, or wanna go for a walk, take a walk outside. So Leah has a G-tube. So can you tell a little bit more about that? Yeah, uh, she's had it now for about two years and we've been having issues with her on eating. She just stopped wanting to eat. And so each day she'd eat less and less and we tried everything to get her to eat. Uh, but after a certain point, we had to then get a G-tube so that we could get the nutrients in her and her weight back up. How has COVID affected your caring for Leah? Um, it's definitely a lot different. We don't, she doesn't get to go to school. She goes to the behavioral center, but she doesn't get her normal special ed school. She can't really stay on the computer. Uh, it's affected my life a whole lot more than me because I work full time and she stays home with her full time. 
It's, it's hard because she loves to go out. She loves, you know, she'll go to the store, she'll go, you know, out in public places, and she doesn't get to do that. So um, the only time she gets to go out now is when she goes to therapy, but that is great because she gets her social time with other kids and gets out of the house. So that's been, so that part has been helpful to her. But before we had that, the therapy at the center, she would get restless because she wasn't able to go with me anywhere. I had to, she had to be home with her dad or, or vice versa. But she, I could tell she was starting to get irritable after being home. So that's been hard for her, I think. And, it, and, it's, and it's, it's sad we can't, you know, haven't been able to, you know, include her in, you know, outings. Why was Sheila hired on? She was hired on with her ABA therapy that they did at home. And she worked with her for about a year. And then uh, once COVID had started up, she had, had to step away from that job. And so after that, I called her up and I asked her to, to change into her babysitter. And, and she agreed to it. And I just know that she knows Leah a lot better than somebody that is meeting her for the first time. And I knew that she could speak her language and knew how Leah worked. And since then, she's been her babysitter. How helpful has Shaylee been since you've hired her on? Oh, very helpful because before her, we didn't have a sitter. I had tried to find a babysitter before, but didn't have any luck just because of the fact that they don't know her. So it's hard for me to hire them. So it's been a lot you know, more helpful because I have the help now. You know, when I need to go out and do something or go out for a date night, you know, now I do have somebody to actually, you know, come in and stay with Leah during that time. What is it like caregiving for Leah? Caregiving for Leah is incredibly satisfying. She is incredibly sweet and she's a really easy kid to take care of. She doesn't really need a whole lot except for when she needs to be fed or changed. Other than like that, she just wants to play with you and be close to you, so it's incredible. Do you think other families who don't have family members with disabilities are aware of the challenges that your family faces during the pandemic? To a certain extent, they know Brief, you know, for brief amounts of time that they're with her, they understand, you know, some dis difficulties, but they don't fully understand, you know, day to day, you know, day in, day out, how it, how it can be tiresome or repetitive, you know, and kind of, it can be stressful. For the most part, no. No. I, I think people think that, I think they want to think that they understand, but they don't. Mm -hmm. So if you could tell them one thing, what would it be? Um, don't take anything for granted with your children. Because them talking, going to the bathroom on their own, being self-sufficient, um, all the things that you would take for granted in a, in a normal child, uh, don't. <laughs> because we would give anything for her to be able to do those things on her own. We love her unconditionally, but it's, it's a challenge. 